Come on. the first three-point contest and he just starts looking at guys doesn't say a word and, and people are getting kind of nervous and then he finally speaks and says I'm just just looking to see who's gonna finish second and Larry would back up his boast by not only winning the contest but blowing away the competition with a phenomenal shooting display That check's had my name on it for a week now, and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing, and my teammates said I wasn't going to win it, but I, I came back and uh, lucked out, really. Bird would luck out again the next year, but in 1988, it looked like his luck had finally run out. He certainly doesn't have that normal Bird rhythm going for him. Come on, Dave. Seconds remaining. has only seven. has to be 15. That's eight. Making nine. And ten. And eleven as we're counting. Still got to drop one here quickly. 14. This is a tie for the money. Yo! What's up, guys? When I started making this vlog last week, when I was at Springs Valley and watching clips of Larry Bird, I started to think about how a poker tournament was like that last one there, where, you know, as the blinds increase, you start falling behind. And then eventually, when you're making deep runs, things start clicking and coming together and the emotions run high and it's awesome. So I was gonna make this like a Larry Bird vlog when I went to play cash game this weekend, but of course when I first started to video things my camera was full because I'm an amateur. I'm an amateur poker player and evidently I'm an amateur vlogger. I do want to go through a couple of hands I ran into to see your guys' thoughts. Well one of them will be to see your thoughts and the other one just to show you that poker is dead. Alright, this was at a 1-3 game and I'm in the small blind with ace-8. First to act comes around and makes it $10 to go and then folds around to middle position and the guy in middle position was an older Asian gentleman who kept yelling, gamble, gamble, <laughs> and he he would bet anything and play any two cards. It was it was a good time. And this hand he just chose to follow along. The flop comes out, ace king six, two clubs. Being first to act, I just check. The big blind also checks. This gentleman made it 15, I believe. And of course, gamble comes along for 15. And with my aces, I decided to see where I'm at and also call 15. And this guy folded. The turn came the eight of hearts, giving me two pair. So I wanted to take over with the gamble behind me and start off with a small bet of 20 bucks. And it comes around to this guy who I can't even describe how he played. It was tight, weird, passive. <laughs> um, he raised to 40, I believe. And at that point, Gamble folded, which was surprising. So the $40 didn't concern me. I'm thinking flush draw or ace, an ace hand, like ace queen, ace jack, I don't know. And I call. And the river came, the king of clubs. So that counterfeited my two pair. And I was just going to see what I could win at showdown. So I checked my ace eight. The guy who raised me earlier 
he also checks and flips over ace king for a boat everybody paused and looked at him like what are you doing why do you why do you check the nuts there and he says i was afraid of the clubs so his full house was afraid of the flesh if i would have thought that he was that kind of player in any way shape or form i would have took a stab at it and got the guy to fold a boat i don't believe he would have folded though i think he would have cried and called with his full house so as you can see by the chip stacks i dwindled down 200 really fast the asian gamble threw me off he was betting big and then it, later on i realized that he would bet and just muck his cards when people would call so i decided that was good for me and i topped off back to 300 and then i started to climb and by the end of the day spoiler alert i ended down one dollar it was a five and a half hour session down one dollar so I was actually pretty happy about it being stuck to, to something early. And then on this hand, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on how I handled the flop here. I had deuces on the button, and it gets to uh, gamble, and he raises it to 15. So on the button in a 1-3 game with the pocket pair, I just call. I'm calling no matter what. I could have possibly raised, but I just call and the small blind calls. And the flop shows up 2-8 king with two spades. There's nothing better than flopping your set and seeing your set on the window. So the small blind bets out $15. Gamble raises to 30 and I tank for a few and just grab a stack which is 100 and push it in and the small blind folds and Gamble berates me for the longest time before he folds. Was, was I showing too much strength right away? They both thought I was on a flush draw. Should I have just smooth called the 30 or maybe doubled the 30 instead of going to 100? I'm not sure the best way. I took it down, but I probably could have got more money if the flush didn't come. So I'd like to know your thoughts on how to handle future hands like this below. So that sums up my week and my one cash session. Um, upcoming, I have two big tournaments that I cannot wait to play. The Heartland Poker Tour is coming to Belterra. That's about a two and a half hour drive for me, but I am excited. This weekend, I'm gonna play the $300 entry. It's a 75K guaranteed monster stack and I will have a lot better footage I hope showing you you know things leading up to a tournament for an amateur player and going through the tournament and I will try to get that out a lot quicker because the following weekend I'm going to do the Heartland main event which is an $1,100 event and I'm gonna turn that free roll from last month there into the buy-in for this and take it down and I am pumped. If you would, like this video, comment below, and subscribe so you can see my Heartland Poker Tour journey in the next few weeks. And hopefully I can show you guys stacking chips like I'm stacking wood. I should, I should probably cut that out. Crap. <laughs>